Card Game Mercenaries. Nailed it. Hey, It's Martin. I'm back again. And about time too. And this time, I'm in the mood. Martin Villainy here, coming to you from the Little Karibo channel on YouTube. Is it still up? I assume it is because I'm talking to you. And for those of you who are just tuning in, this series, Little Karibo Watches Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, it's a confusing title. The premise of it is Little Karibo Watches Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. And then talks about that. Everybody talk about mm, pop music. But yeah, this series is a series of videos where I watch an individual episode of the GX dub, which is available at Hulu.com, Yu-Gi-Oh.com, Crunchyroll.com? I don't know if the dub's on there. I'm pretty sure it is. I think if you scroll down, or if you click on a different window when you go to Yu-Gi-Oh GX, you can find the dub. You can find the dub on there. So go to those websites and watch the show along with me, one episode a week. And last week's episode was the first part of a two-parter, I'm flipping you off in Britain, uh, called Tag Team Trial. Player. Thanks, Teddy. So naturally, one can conclude that this week's episode is gonna feature me watching Tag Team Trial Player. Part 2. And if you guessed that, you'd be bang right. Somewhere off screen, Bastion's like, mm, there is a 1 in 500 probability that he's not going to watch that episode. Mm. It's like, nobody asked for your commentary, Bastion. Bastion is the human representation of the YouTube comments. Don't feed the Bastion. Don't read the YouTube comments. So to summarize where we're at in the middle of this two-parter that we're about to experience the conclusion of, <laughs> Jaden and Cyrus are being put on trial for the whole of Duel Academy uh, by Crowler and Chancellor Shepard, I guess, to an extent, and they're making them duel the Paradox Brothers from the original Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Monsters anime in a tag team duel! Player? That's right! And they've summoned, like, Gate Guardian and Pink Floyd's The Wall to their side of the field. J Jaden and Cyrus are in big trouble. Because if the music industry couldn't stand against the release of Pink Floyd's The Wall, what are they to do? How can they hope to stop it? Also, Gate Guardian's pretty strong as well, I guess. But it's not a rock opera sensation that was turned into a movie. So what are you gonna do? So let's just dive right into part two of this two-parter and see where it leads us. Will Cyrus and Jaden win? Yes. Maybe. But before we do get into the action, I should point out that the episode does start off with the amazing Yu-Gi-Oh! GX English theme. And erroneously, I was told last time that the lyrics to the theme song weren't looking too hard. They were working too hard. But you know what? You must have been working too hard, mate, because you weren't looking hard enough for the real lyrics. It's f***ing looking too hard. So, no. Nah. So the episode starts off with Jaden and Cyrus staring down the two enemy monsters of Gate Guardian and Defense Wall. And it's a really, really tense moment. There's like a hush that falls over the duel arena. Until f***ing Bastion ruins everything and deigns to speak his mind. Well, it's two monsters to none. That's a simple calculation to figure. They'll be knackered. They'll be knackered? They'll be knackered. No! Knackered? In that accent? That sounds wrong. It's like if I said in a common accent, Oh, poor Sparty, you twat. <laughs> I don't think so, Bastion. No. No, I, I won't stand for that. You don't get to use words like knackered if you sound like a posh head like this head does. Alexis calls out Bastion's brand of bullshit. Nice, Bastion. Now you're dogging them in words I don't even understand. She don't understand what knackered means because it ain't one of the many hundreds of kinds of cards that she's memorized. Alexis says that she's sure that Jaden has a strategy to defeat these Paradox Brothers. But Bastion says he's not worried about Jaden, he's worried about Cyrus. Saying he's walked into every spell card and trap card that the Paradox Brothers have played. And Alexis says... You know, on second thought, I liked it better when I couldn't understand what you were saying. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. It's about time someone got you to apologize for your nonsense, Bastion. I'm telling you, Alexis is going up in the ranks of favorite character just by the way she's tweeting Bastion these last few episodes. She's climbing them ranks. On the outskirts of the duel arena, Chomley watches and thinks to himself, please let them win. If they win, I'll give up grilled cheeses for a week. He's fat. fat! And then he follows it up by saying he'll just fry them instead. He's fat! Crowler is on the verge of orgasm watching Jaden and Cyrus fail to meet the challenge of the parrot. Paradox Brothers. And Chancellor Shepard is apparently mid-orgasm as he says this next line. Enjoying the boys' punishment a little too much, are we? Yes. 
Crowler insists that he's only excited because he feels like the duel is almost over and he feels bad for those kids because they look so exhausted. And in the background, we see Professor Banner watching the duel from the stands with Pharaoh the cat held in his arms. Meow. Hold me up higher. I wish to see them fail with greater clarity. Also, where's the guy bringing round all the cat food? Chancellor Shepard says it looks like Jaden's getting his second wind and Jaden lifts his head up all dramatic in slow motion. At least I assume assume it's slow motion, it could just be that he's knackered. See, that's how you use it properly, Bastion. Parrot and Docs break out that whole rhyming shtick. The Slifer Red forges ahead when a smart duelist would have fled. They would have rhymed with the word dead, but it doesn't exist in the four kids universe, unfortunately. Jaden says that he wished that he'd been put in orange dorm so that they wouldn't be able to rhyme at him. First of all, Jaden, f*** off. Second of all, Jaden, they've been using a million other rhymes that aren't related to the color of the dorm that you're in. And third of all, door hinge. Jaden summons Spark me, Spark me, Spark me in attack mode. And then he gives Sparkman a gun again. Stop giving your dual monsters guns. Jaden explains that when Sparkman uses his fucking gun, it causes whichever monster he uses it on to switch position on the field. And in the case of Gate Guardian, he makes it switch from attack to defense mode. And I'll start with Gate Guardian. Take a knee! Unless, of course, somebody's playing the Duel Academy National Anthem, in which case we'll have problems. Elemental hero Sparkman shoots Gate Guardian with his big f**k off gun, causing Gate Guardian to go into defense mode, which reminds him of his Wakandan heritage. Bastion deems fit to say that that was a pointless move on Jaden's part. Speaking of pointless moves, your dad making a move on your mom, Bastion! The Paradox Brothers break some more rhymes, as the kids say. When Gate Guardian's on defense, he never tires. Your situation's just as dire. And though I hate to feed the fire, the defense war we played, you have yet to retire. Great, thanks. I'm just gonna throw down a face down now and end my turn. You know, if Jaden get your game on, Yuki thinks that your whole shtick is a bit over the top. Your shtick is a bit over the top. Cyrus feels very disheartened by the state of the game and thinks to himself he may as well just give up so that Jaden can get his own rematch. And Jaden tries to give him some words of encouragement, saying that one draw is all it takes to turn things around. And then he says, you remember the last time that you had one draw that would have turned things around, right, Cyrus? And Cyrus flashes back to him and Jaden playing card games in the Slifer Red Dorm. Except we're seeing it from Pharaoh the Cat's perspective, who's up in the rafters. He's like, meow. This is where I usually bring all the dead bird carcasses that I find around the island. They're meant to be presents for Jaden, but Chumley mistakes them for midnight snacks. Chumley has eaten a lot of dead bird carcasses. Anyway, in the flashback, Cyrus gives up the card game, but then checks out what he would have drawn next, and he says, oh man, this would have turned the whole thing around. And then Jaden jumps in and says, yeah, but you can't change the fact that you gave up, so you lost, you loser. So in other words, Jaden is only inspirational and encouraging when he feels it will benefit him and help him win card games. But otherwise, you're on your own. Back in the present, Jaden says, do you hear what I'm saying, Cyrus? Yeah, we hear what you're saying. We all heard you saying your friend was a giant bitch in the flashback. And then back in the present, Jaden says to Cyrus that there's no such thing as a final draw in a card game. Because depending on what card you draw, you might be able to draw another card. No, that's not how it works, Jaden. What are you f***ing on about? There's plenty of times when there is a final draw. That's what decking out is. Why would they put that in the rules if there's no such thing as that? Have you read the rules, Jaden? Because everything up to now suggests that you definitely haven't. That's what sleeping in class does to you. Cyrus says, but, and Jaden says, no buts. Which is another problem I have with Jaden, because there's always time for buts. Jaden says it's all up to Cyrus now to take out that gate guardian. And Cyrus looks at his cards and has yet another flashback back to when he was in the Slifer Red Dorm. And this time Pharaoh the cat is sleeping in the rafters. Meow. I am dreaming of an all cat version of Yu-Gi-Oh! In which I am the main character. It's called Yugi Neko. It's got Cat Yugi, Cat Joey, Cat Tristan, Cat Kaiba, Cat Mokuba, Cat Marek, regular tech. She's still a girl. Everyone else is cats. It's all cats. It's a great show. Very entertaining. It's much better than whatever crap you're watching on Crunchyroll. Brah. Anyway, in the flashback, Jaden is looking over Cyrus's shoulder and he says, Oh man, that card is pretty sweet. With the right combo, it can beat anything. Can I have it? 
What the f***, Jaden? You just beat Cyrus in a card game, and then the one card that would have helped him beat you, you're like, I'm having that. What kind of a sh friend is Jaden anyway? He's the kind of guy that is gonna come round to a house party that you're throwing, compliment all the pictures of your family that you have on the wall, and then just leave with them. Cyrus looks at his deck and thinks that that one card that Jaden mentioned in the flashback is the only chance that they have. And then he realizes that if he doesn't draw that card, then all their hopes and dreams will be shattered. And he flashes back to all those classic memories he's had with Jaden, such as being in the Slifer Red Dorm with him and watching him sleep in class. It's not exactly a storied relationship you guys have at this point, is it? You guys have known each other for what, a month? It's not quite like Joey in Duelist Kingdom where it was like, if he loses, his sister will be eternally blinded. No, this time it's like, if we lose, we have to go to another school. My heart is in my throat. I'm so worried about him. And then Cyrus draws and magically he has the exact card that he needs. Wow! And it's Drillroid, which is a drill monster with a cartoon face, and not a drill-based treatment for your hemorrhoids. Cyrus announces that when Drillroid attacks a defense position monster, it automatically destroys them. And Jaden says, "Ah oh, yeah! And I say, F off. Cyrus tries attacking Gate Guardian and destroying it, but then Defense Wall gets in the way. I guess Cyrus was too busy reflecting on the two entire weeks of friendship that he's had with Jaden to remember that Defense Wall automatically blocks any attack. And Jaden and Cyrus are now down to 1200 life points. They're living on the edge. And then it turns out that Cyrus had a spell card face down called Shield Crush. You know, Phil Coulson is my Shield Crush. And this card allows Cyrus to destroy any monster and this is his words, which is hiding in defense mode. I'm sorry, but defense isn't hiding. And obviously Gate Guardian, the giant like 10 story monster was trying real hard to hide. Cyrus uses the card to finally destroy Gate Guardian and Jaden throws the Paradox Brothers rhyming shtick back at their faces. Nice going, Cy. The bigger they brawl, the harder they fall. What was, what? What was that moment? And you can see by the vacant expression in their eyes just how much their friendship means to them and, and how, how much their hopes and dreams are riding on this duel. Either that or the constant exposure to the holographic fields that the duel arena contains has rendered them completely brain dead. Bastion says, Ooh. Cyrus sets a card face down and he and Jaden exchange compliments. But the Paradox Brothers aren't having any of it. Mind if we join in on all the praise you two? Because for destroying that monster, we should really do a poo. Thank you. Ah. The Paradox Brothers reference a popular idiom. They say what doesn't destroy you makes you stronger. And it's true. In that case, suffering through this much Yu-Gi-Oh has made me the strongest human being on the planet. Rivaling the buffness of Chumley's dad. I also really enjoy the fact that there is a four kids version of popular catchphrases featuring the word kill. But they can't use the word kill because they're in the four kids universe. Do you think in wedding ceremonies in the four kids universe they say, till the shadow realm do us part? You think there's a James Bond film in the four kids universe called Live and Let Destroy? You think anybody goes to bed at the end of a long day in the four kids universe and says, oh, I've got to go to sleep. I'm shadow realm tired. Or do they just say, I'm knackered. Para activates Dark Element, a spell card that is only activated when GG is in the GY. And they pay half their life points to summon Dark Guardian, who is like a big f off guy with a f off axe and a spider body. F off. Is it gone? You, you're not lying this time, right? Okay. Off! Para commands Dark Guardian to attack with. Now, Guardian attack Drilloid with Axe Slash Bash! <laughs> axe Slash Bash! Axe Slash Bash! Axe? No! Axe Slash Bash! What? What? Axe Slash Bash! You're a card game mercenary who's clearly been working the card game scene for several years, and that's the best you could come up with for an axe attack. Slash and bash are two different actions. You can't slash and bash something. That's a, no, that is, that is, that's counterintuitive. I don't accept it, para. Para, you fucking idiot. Bastion gets up out of his seat and I've never been so 
fucking happy to see Bastion in my life. He got me distracted enough to forget about Axe slash Axe slash Bash! Bastion's very concerned that if this next attack connects, then Cyrus and Jaden lose the duel. So Dark Guardian attacks with Axie slashy bashy or whatever. But Jaden plays his trap card, Hero Barrier, which is a card that lets Jaden stop an attack so long as he has an elemental hero on the field. And the attack is deflected, followed by a series of long drawn out shots of everyone just sort of staring and, and being shocked, which pads a good two minutes of the episode. The Paradox Brothers are stunned by Jaden and Cyrus's ingenuity. An impressive trap card. I never quite thought they'd be so hard. Why did you have expectations of how hard they would be? I myself was expecting them to be quite flaccid. Cyrus tries to pick himself up and look more determined, so the Paradox Brothers tease him for it. So Jaden tells them to pot it and then he draws Can of Greed. Sorry, he, he tells them to can it and then he draws Pot of Greed. Jaden then plays Fusion Gate, allowing all the Crystal Gems to have a massive orgy. And Jaden fuses Avion, Bubble Man and Spark Man in order to fuse Elemental Hero Tempest, who looks like every single one of the X-Men into a cup, and then they got a baby out of it. Bastion and Alexis give running commentary on this new hero. Fine creature, but it still can't beat their guardian. <sighs> Bastion, just whose side are you on? I think by now we've established quite clearly that Bastion is on the posh head side of things, Alexis. They are their own side of posh heads. They think only of their own. And while Bastion may be right and Tempest isn't strong enough to fight that Dark Guardian, Jaden activates his Skyscraper card, which much like in the first episode, summons an entire city block around them and raises elemental hero Tempest's attack. Ever hear that you should never play in a construction zone? Well, it's true, cause now my elemental hero gets an extra 1,000 attack points because it's weaker than Dark Guardian. Wait, so, doesn't that mean you should play in a construction zone if it directly benefits you? I... What's the moral here? Remember kids, don't play in the train tracks! Unless you're running a train deck, in which case you should definitely be playing in the train tracks! Jaden has Hero Tempest attack with Powerhouse Plummet! Which is marginally better than Axe Slash Bash, I suppose. But of course, as the Paradox Brothers have pointed out, Dark Guardian can't be destroyed in battle. And so Jaden has to discard one of Cyrus's cards in order to keep Tempest alive. Dox uses his one-on-one -on -one trap card to fight Elemental Hero Tempest, causing Jaden to have to get rid of his Skyscraper card. And all the buildings disappear from the field. And now Jaden and Cyrus's life points are at 200. Jaden gives Cyrus the third in a trilogy of pep talks, which which is enough to make Cyrus remember his brother telling him that there's a difference between knowing how to use a card and knowing when to play it. And then Cyrus has a flashback, a, a vision, I'm, I'm not sure what it is. It kind of looks like a flashback because Cyrus is wearing like an old school uniform and not the Duel Academy uniform. Anyway, wherever they are, they're having a chat. What's the difference between knowing how to use a card and knowing how to play it? Aren't they the same? That's something that can never be taught, only learned. What? You can't teach someone when it's right to play a card. Then why does Duel Academy even f***ing exist? If the show is insisting that these are like abstract concepts that you can only figure out by playing the game and having experience, why is there a whole education system built around it? Why? It's because of nonsense like this that you come up with stuff like Axe Slash Bash. It's f in card games! It's not a Jedi mind trick! You don't need a certain number of midi-chlorians to be able to summon all five pieces of Exodia. What are you on about? Cyrus sacrifices his Drillroid to summon this UFO-roid. And then he activates the spell card, Power Bond, which you remember from a few episodes ago when they had the whole plot line about it, you know. And then Cyrus uses the spell card Power Bond given to him by his brother in order to fuse his UFO roid with Elemental Hero Tempest, creating this monstrosity. It looks like Job Bluth in the year 3000 on his Segway of the future. But the Paradox Brothers aren't unfazed and they point out that once again, Dark Guardian can't be destroyed in battle. And Cyrus says, Yeah, that's true. But it doesn't really matter. I feel like every plot criticism I have of Yu-Gi-Oh can be answered with that clip. Man, it's so stupid. That first season of Yu-Gi-Oh, they don't even follow the rules of the card game. Yeah, that's true. But it doesn't really matter. The original series of Yu-Gi-Oh is so great, but they keep making spin-offs and I don't like it. Yeah, that's true. But it doesn't really matter. 
Powerbond's effect causes UFO Roid's attack to raise to 8,000 points. And Cyrus has his monster attack with Cosmic Flux Blast. And Cyrus automatically wins this duel by having an infinitely better sounding attack name than everybody else f***ing does. The Paradox Brothers lose all their life points and Dark Guardian is assumed into terrifying monstrosity heaven. Bastion is also impressed. Well, well, they've won. I'm getting more impressed every day. And by impressed, he means posh. And by posh, he means... He's a posh head. And then Alexis lets on a little too much, if you know what I mean. I'm just happy that Jaden gets to stay here. Jaden and Cyrus, you mean? Well, yes, Cyrus too, of course. I just said Jaden because I, uh... Moving on. Oh, she wants to kiss him on the face with a mouth. Look, it doesn't matter if you're into Jaden, his sexuality is clearly card games. Until they develop some sort of plastic surgery that turns you into a game of Uno, he ain't f***ing you. Chaz gets up and leaves, closely followed by his Chaz Chavs. Crowler is like, what? How did they win? And Professor Banner comes over with Pharaoh the cat and says, oh, it must be all of your great teaching. Oh wait, they're in my dorm. But hang on, they, they have like a bunch of classes with Crowler, so... What is Banner f***ing on about? Does Banner not know their schedule? Professor Banner, if you don't know that these kids have classes with Crowler, then that casts you in a pretty shoddy light. Pharaoh the cat licks Crowler on the face. Meow. Forget Jaden and Alexis, this is the real ship of the show. Crowler? More like Meowler. Pra. Jaden tells Cyrus to let it all out, as he knows he cries when he's happy. And Cyrus tries to hold it in, but he eventually lets out a big long cry. And Jaden says, ha, some things never change. Yeah, Jaden Yuki there, reinforcing his best friend's emotional fragility. Party clown and part-time chancellor of this school, Shepard says, Well, one thing that won't be changing is your enrollment at the academy. You're here to stay. <laughs> Jaden tells the Paradox Brothers that dueling them was an honor, and if they ever want to rematch, they should just holler. Sorry, Jaden, I think they're gonna be too busy being card game mercenaries. <laughs> Chancellor Shepard tells Jaden that he wants a five-page report on what he learned from dueling the Paradox Brothers. Five pages of what? What, is there gonna be like an entire paragraph about how the phrase axe slash bash is like the sh thing you've ever heard. Knowing Jaden, he'll probably just put one word per page and he'll put rhyming can suck my d Chancellor Shepard says that the report should also include a realization as to why trespassing at the abandoned dorm was wrong. Too late, you've got my dick sucking report, sorry. Also, Chancellor Shepard, shouldn't you be giving a report to the police about the abandoned dorm or, or anything? Cause people could have died. Punishing kids in card games is not how you solve this problem. Jaden complains, so Chancellor Shepard makes it 10 pages, which means Jaden will have to just draw exclamation marks on all the final five pages. Cyrus looks out at his brother Zane in the crowd and thinks to himself that he hopes that he impressed him in some way. Look, Cyrus, Zane was impressed by Jaden within an hour of meeting him. Maybe he's not the best judge of character. Maybe try impressing somebody whose opinion actually matters. Like Pharaoh the cat. Meow. I personally prefer the cat version of Cyrus from the cat version of Yu-Gi-Oh that I star in, in my dreams, every night. Chumley runs down to celebrate with his two friends, and Jaden gets sandwiched between him and Cyrus, causing Chumley to devour them all whole, including himself, as it's the closest thing to food that he's seen all day. The crowd applauds, like, vigorously, as if this is the greatest f***ing thing they've ever seen in their entire lives. Watch them. <laughs> Banner stands nearby and smiles proudly at them, as if he did literally anything to help. And Pharaoh the cat lets out a big long meow. Meow, that's all folks. And Jaden says that's game, stealing the final line from its rightful owner, Pharaoh the cat. Just like he stole all those pictures of my family when he came over for that house party I was throwing. What a d and that's the end of the two-parter! And I gotta say, that was a emotional roller coaster. It almost felt like a mini season finale of sorts. Like this is the the culmination of everything that Jaden and Cyrus, Cyrus especially, had learned up until this point. And that's kind of cool. You didn't really get many of those in the original Yu-Gi-Oh! series, did you? Everything sort of felt like it was building to watching Yami Yugi defeat the, the antagonist of the season. Whereas this 
felt like a the end of a chapter of a book about the school rather than just it being all about Jaden. And I like that. I like that about GX is it feels like it's much harder to predict where the show is going. Obviously, I can predict that, that Jaden and Cyrus were going to win, but... It was hard to predict getting to this point, if that makes sense. And it was really cool to see the Paradox Brothers show up. I, I hope we get a bunch of other cameos from classic Yu-Gi-Oh characters. I know a few come back. I know Grandpa comes uh, along a little bit, and then Kaiba shows up, uh, and Yugi eventually. But I, other, other than that, I don't really know. So I'm, I'm, I'm curious. But what did you think? Was that the payoff that you were hoping for? Uh, was that how you thought things were going to play out after watching part one? Uh, did things satisfy you? Did you like the uh, the sheer amount of Pharaoh the Cat that was in this episode? Because I did. There was a lot of Pharaoh the Cat that I was not expecting. Because he's, he's not part of this story at all. But he's in it so much. I was down with it, man. I'm down with the cat. Once again, I want to give a massive shout out to all of our Patreon pledges. Thank you so much, you guys. You guys keep us going. I, I won't lie. It's, it's been kind of rough. Uh, the last month or so, and, and especially today. <laughs> I, I, I'm not gonna lie, I didn't do so well. But uh, you guys make it more... You guys make it less difficult. You guys make it easier for me to get through and get this stuff done, and, and it makes it fun for me. So thank you for all your support, each and every one of you. And thanks to you for watching. I, I know that this is just a, a random British bloke just sort of chatting about Yu-Gi-Oh! GX as he watches it, but uh, I, I'm having a good time, and I, I really hope that it translates through there. I really hope that it does. I also want to give another massive shout out to Jesse Nowak who edited this one because I've been swamped working on Yu-Gi-Oh! Abridged and a bunch of other things and I want to make sure I give her a little classy shout out. So thanks, thanks Jesse. Give you a classy shout out. Until next time, I'll see you later. To create UFO Ride Fighter! It's better! It's a